What's going on guys, Simply Pops here, and this is the 2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch top of the line specs. Is it still good in 2019 or 2020, depending on when you're watching this video. I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with the specifications, but I just wanna point out some key features. Um, this is the 2.5 gigahertz quad core processor i7. This is 16 gigabytes of RAM. Also, this has 512 gigabytes of storage which we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. In terms of the graphics card, this is the Radeon R9 with two gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM or memory. So yeah, so that's really, really important. That's the big difference between the 15 inch and the 13 inch. The 15 inch has dedicated graphics while the 13 inch has integrated graphics. Dedicated is far more superior than integrated. The storage, now going back to the storage, this can go up to one terabyte. So you can configure it up to uh, one terabyte, but I picked this up at my local Apple store, so I didn't customize it online. This is what they had on shelves. This was the top dog but I didn't know you could configure it up to one terabyte. If I would have known that, I would have definitely went with the one terabyte. Taking a look at the design, I do have a Slick Wraps wrap on this. Um, this is the Bamboo Natural Series. I think it looks unique if you want to stand out and yeah, you know, make your MacBook look different. Now in terms of the port, we have your headphone jack, USB-A, your Thunderbolts, <laughs> classic, and then you have the really, really, really convenient MagSafe charging port. I like this port so much. It's one of my favorite ports of all time. It's just the fact how if, you know, if you trip on the cable, your laptop is not going to be flying all over the place. I do like the Type-C ports, but this is definitely more superior when it comes down to safety. So yeah, the MagSafe was just completely genius. I hope Apple would bring it back on the next generation, but I kind of doubt that. And Apple is also missing the glowing Apple logo, which we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. But on the other side, we have a SD card slot and then we have a HDMI port right there, which is very, very convenient if you have like a presentation, you can hook it up without any dongles or adapters. And we have another USB port right here. And that's all your ports. So this is the OG MacBook Pro with all the ports, no dongles to walk around with. And honestly, if you ask me, it looks very, very futuristic. It's thin. When I first lift this up, I thought it was a little heavy on the heavier side, but I was, you know, traveling with iPads. So, you know, transitioning to this at the time was a little heavy, but it's not too bad. Um, and it's very, very thin. Now, open it up. The beauty thing about MacBooks, you could open it up with one hand without holding the actual uh, bottom. This is running macOS Mojave, but it can be upgraded to macOS Catalina. In terms of the brightness, this goes all the way up to 300 nits. I wish it was a little brighter, but at the time, this was very, very good. And it's still good enough to this day. But as you guys can see, I have another slick wrap. This is the Slate series. And as well as I have a keyboard cover. So if I, you know, spill something or any crumbs, nothing is going to get in between the keys. I highly recommend it because you want to protect those keys. The trackpad really does age well. Um, you do have a four sensor, so if you, um, I was about to say 3D touch, but if you press on the trackpad hard, you can get different actions. So if I go into my finder, I can go into, let's say this, I was making a video on copper. I could 3D press or <laughs> force touch or press on the trackpad hard to open it up just like that without pressing the space bar. Or let's say you don't know a word and this could be anywhere, you can press on it hard and actually see what's going on to what's that word mean. And as you guys can see, I have nothing on my desktop whatsoever. I even hide the dock. I have it as an auto hide. So when I'm working, I don't have that in the way, but icons are completely hidden. I'm using an application called Hidden Me and that's gonna hide your desktop icons. I think it looks so much more better. It really does look like true Mac OS. I'm also using another app called Bartender, so that's going to hide all the elements to make things a little bit more neater, so I just have the time. And if anything, if there's a battery change or status change, it'll show you know, for a short period of time. So I do like some apps. I have a nice little setup going on here. And yeah, it's completely fast, no complaints whatsoever. And that's really thanks to the flash storage, the quad-core processor, the i7 processor. And yeah, so things just launch up in a heartbeat. So settings comes right up. Calendar comes right up. If this had a mechanical hard drive, it would have been done. Like it, it would not age well. So Game Capture HD opens right up. It takes some time because this is a heavy application. 
Now, I was just in Photoshop. I was just on Photoshop trying to fix up this picture a little bit. If you're doing any digital work, whether if it's Photoshop, Illustrator, or uh, you know even Final Cut Pro, this thing is a champ. And that's thanks to the optimization of Mac OS. Uh, so yeah, everything is nice and fast. The zooming is not loading. A bunch of layers, a bunch of elements. I was even doing something like this. Yeah, and here's Final Cut Pro. I just finished editing the copper video. If you guys did miss that video, I throw a link in the description. Um, actually, I edit all my videos on an SSD, so this is gonna close. I wish I had more storage on my machine. That's the only thing. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of, you know, video editing, Photoshop, illustration, you want to get the, as much storage as you as you can. The storage is not looking pretty good. I only have 17.4 gigabytes left out of the 500 or 512. Yeah, so one terabyte would have been perfect for me, but. I did not opt for that and as you guys can see I have iOS files so this is everything for my phone so all the pictures are backed up on my computer here instead of using iCloud because I don't want to pay for iCloud storage. I also have a virtual machine too so as you guys can see Parallels VM so that's the virtual machine so it's running Windows 10. Documents, apps, photos, iTunes, and system. I think system is like all the cache files on uh, Final Cut Pro or you know all the files that's not really identified here but yeah so that is a lot of storage that I'm using so here's a 1080p video you know you can edit 4k too if you watch my channel most of my videos are either edited on this computer or the iMac Pro but before when I got the iMac Pro this was handling all the export speeds are on point like I cannot complain so I'm going to actually export this video It's a 3 minute 1080p 30 frames per second video all right so I'm exporting this video it's a 3 minute 1080p footage and look it just goes and that's thanks to everything all the beast all the internals and look just flying through it and this is a 3 minute 1080p footage 4k is a little bit slower because it's more processing power that it needs, but it's still very, very fast. And you know, if you use Premiere, it varies, but Final Cut Pro is one of the best editing softwares on the Mac, just because of the optimization here. And look, it is done. And as you guys can see, this is the video here, and it is completely ready to go. This SSD is super duper expensive, but it is worth every single penny. One thing I wish this computer had, this MacBook, is type C now you know obviously 2015 was a totally different time but just n that next year 2016 that's when Apple decided to switch to type C but that's okay you know what I mean a lot of people like the USB a port and I do too but we are moving on to type C and this SSD is a complete monster and by the way this is max brightness this is maximum brightness I wish it was just a little bit brighter all the time I'm always gonna have Final Cut Pro open and Photoshop open and Google Chrome. Say so yeah, I'm always gonna have all three of those applications open. And yeah, Chrome is here. Uh, Final Cut Pro is here. And I always have another desktop for Photoshop. So I like to create different desktops so I can switch between, which is a very, very nice feature. I feel like a lot of people do not use this. All right, here's a video that I shot. This video is coming soon. This is a 4K footage. Yeah, it just go through the timeline very, very smoothly could play back things and the sound quality is not bad too and it just go through the timeline very very beefy so yeah so this is an excellent YouTube machine whether you watching movies creating content or maybe you are taking this to college maybe you have some uh, digital technology classes it's really like it gets the job done no complaints whatsoever Mac OS Mojave is going flawless way better than Yosemite when this thing first came out this had Yosemite installed and Yosemite was horrible. I wanted to show you guys this app right here. This is an app that I use called PDF Element and it is completely like this is like a must have. This is a staple application if you're going to be downloading PDFs or if you want to make some revisements, some annotations, you could do so. Highlight just like that and you could even change the text too. So if you could download any PDF you could change the text right there on the fly so you can take out you you can put something else anything you want and yeah productivity 
you can do it on this machine. This is an average screen. You can see what's going on. It's sharp. It's hard to see the pixels unless you zoom really well like this, but it's really good. So the longer you use your MacBook, the more degrade the battery is going to be. If you're using your computer at max brightness or you're constantly charging it, you're going to see everything right here. So this is a really good application. This is called Battery Health 2. It is free and it's going to check your, uh, your charging cycles, your um, the age of the battery, uh, the manufacturer of when you install the battery. So yeah, this is when my warranty was about to expire. So that's when I decided to uh, change out the battery. You can even see the temperature, the power wattage, everything right here. And you can even see the time remained in too, which is pretty cool. So I like using this application to see what's going on with my battery's health. And that's why I have this widget right here on the side to see what's going on. You will need to change your battery. Changing your battery will optimize the battery performance. And you know, that would make your laptop last longer. But battery life is mediocre. Just have a charger nearby because you don't want to be that guy to use your computer and then it just dies, you know. So, yeah. So battery life is a hit or a miss. It depends on what you're going to do. If you guys look closely, I have a little slider here for my webcam. So this is for privacy reasons. I always like covering my webcam just in case if my computer gets hacked or whatever. And especially this computer doesn't have the T2 chip um, that is found on the newer MacBooks. So having that security is really good. So if I need my webcam, I slide it to my left. If I don't need, I slide it to my right. I also have a screen protector tool on my MacBook just to protect the screen from scratches and stuff like that. But I do need to replace it because as you guys can see, it is peeling up just like that. And most importantly, you do have that beautiful, gorgeous glowing Apple logo. So this is one of the main reasons why I love this MacBook so much is because that glowing Apple logo was so iconic. If I turn it around, you guys can see it's glowing. Now, Apple did took out the glowing Apple logo on newer MacBooks, but this is really beautiful. And you can really be creative because you can have different stickers to really form it, you know, into something different. You could be really creative. And, you know, I would talk about the bezels, but the bezels don't bother me too much. But yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions or concerns about this MacBook 2015, 15 inch, let me know down in the comments down below. And I would say it's a great buy in 2019 or 2020, depending on when you're watching this video. And yeah, so it's hard to believe this is five years. So five years later, I would say this is a true champ to this day.